Here we go then, lower bracket. LGD versus Vici Gaming. The winner advances to the lower bracket final. The loser finishes in fourth place at the International 2015 and the draft is Five underway. Seconds remaining. So Mr. I think LGD will probably go for, you know, more of their similar style, not necessarily a super safe carry for Siler. Um, unlike VG Gaming, I think, who have, tend to pick more stable and late game heroes for how. Like the anti-mage that we've seen a lot, the morphling that we saw yesterday. Dire team ban. And I, th I think that's, that's going to, you know, change the draft a lot. LGD might just like try and five man down Vici's throat, take Radio it out all their towers team. really, really quickly and not give how any spice. Lina ban, that's interesting. We've seen a lot of Lina first pick, obviously, so Dire it's not completely unexpected, but it's, I believe, the first time we have a first phase Lina ban. Oh, we've had, we've had a few. We've had a couple, yeah. yeah we've had a few. Yeah. Against Vici Gaming. Oh, against Vici. Mm, I don't think so. I think because they got it all the time yesterday. Yeah, I think they got the Lina every game when they wanted it. Or, the, or maybe they were some denies pick. I'm going to check it out, but I'm pretty sure that's like an approach LGD. Ten seconds remaining. Like they came into that match with that approach that we're not going to give them Lina. Five seconds remaining. So what do we have left in the pool? Undying, do you think, will be popular? I mean, Undying, there's Tusk, so... Oh, they're gonna go for Queen Clockwork. I think Clockwork has seen too little play for how good he has been in the game that he has been picked. Uh, I believe a lot of heroes are, you know, fighting very well, like uh, Tusk, etc. They're great fighters, but Clockwork, <laughs> he's one of the superior fighters to me. And it's very suitable for Vichy Gaming. Like, in the team characteristics, when we were discussing about Vichy Gaming, we prioritize giving ice as ice, off, a disruptive off lane, and Clock is definitely a very disruptive off lane. Yeah. Those two heroes are... Five seconds. Stark, when he gets his fast blade mail, he's one of the, the very few heroes that can take down Gyro by himself. And well, hookshot cog. I could... mean, you, you kind of force the Gyro not to be playing an item build that's very farm orientated since yes. you need to get it's early rush KB. KB. Exactly. So it, it matters a lot whether or not the clockwork finds farm on the offlane, because if he doesn't find anything, yeah, then of course it then is. it's very hard to do your job as clockwork properly. Like, okay, you do your job and then you die, but if it, you go blade mail, might, maybe you kill someone when you. It's one of those like, games where, as supports, it's completely worth it to you know try to gank on clock's lane and give him a bit of an advantage against the gyro. I think. They w I was just about to say, they could do really well with Rubik too, because they don't have to ban it, firstly, versus VG Gaming, and then secondly, it's really good versus the Clockwork, and we've seen the Rubik-Gyro combo like really, really strong, and just you don't need more than two heroes to deal with that Clock. Yeah, and you guys were mentioning, what if the Clock doesn't get enough from the lane, and this is the type of lane that Clock might actually not get enough from the lane to actually do his job. He's, he's still in dire, though. Remaining. He can still just block the creeps, pull them into the jungle there. He can still get a lot out. Five you have to do it, he didn't. <laughs> Tangle the tree. Oh yeah, run up and tangle. But that was a nice play. Yesterday, the teams didn't respect the Fai's Rubik. They let it go through the second phase, and Vici Gaming always picked it up, and FY had a huge impact. But I remember last year, it was FY's uh, Sand King, and then FY's Mirana. Mirana. So I feel like that guy, you know, no matter what, like banning that guy is almost yeah. impossible. Definitely difficult, at least. He is versatile on his play. And in the previous game that we saw Vici Gaming play, I called out that Fenrir played amazing as well when he played his Winter Wyvern. So LGD first banning it in this game, I mean, sure it's a strong hero, but it's also some respect, I think. I feel like they all set up, set up their games yesterday, especially um, How and Super, and even, it was even mentioned by FY in his interview, he was like, well, I really got carried by Super and How, so one man that's been playing quite stable so far, and sometimes very, very well, obviously. But Ice 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 might also be you know, he Five might shine in that really series mean. and cause a lot of trouble to LGD safe lane, and that's their weakness, you know. I feel like SSS has a really good, a big role in that, uh, in that match. So you guys wonder, or talking about Clockwork being like a top tier pick, one of the reasons I don't think he's like the best off laner is just because Darkseer has been really prominent in the past couple of days, and if you pick Clockwork, you can't really run a Darkseer, and then your team fight's hampered a lot. And you can also like vacuum people out of the cogs, it's Ten pretty seconds deadly. Remaining. I can agree with that. It, the heroes are different though. That's if you look at the Clockwork as a Five team fighter, but I mean remaining. what Clockwork brings to the table that Darcy don't, it's the, the ganking potential, like the rune control, the gyro, as we said, he's going to be a bit afraid to run by himself if he doesn't have a BKB and stuff like this, the scouting, 
I mean, could you put it that way, where Cloudwork is more snowball, because you can actually find solo pickoffs if you get a good time, but Darkseid is more stable. You want yeah, to exactly. just get your items, levels, and join a team fight with a mech and dagger. It's That's also it. a matter of recovery. Like Clockwork, if he doesn't get stuff on lane, what is the fallback? Well, you need to get level 6 somehow, and then you need to get ganks. Yeah. Whereas, if Darkseid has a hard time on lane, which, first of all, he can farm quite easily, uh, he could just run into jungle. He has Iron Shell. So, they're very different mechanically how they work. And I like the AA band as well, like Vichy has showed that the Clockwork plus A combination could actually destroy a gyrocopter very well. To me the AA band is also, like, when I see an AA band versus Vichy Gaming, it feels like a Spectre band in a way. I feel like the combo AA-Spectre is such a good combo, both like in the laning phase and later on in the game, that when you ban A, you're like, you're not getting Spectre, and playing against Spectre is always scary. Also cool how. that they picked up the Dazzle as soon as the Ancient Apparition was banned. They ban out the Tusk and pick up Dazzle. So hello, hello, if hello. the enemy team is denying healing when you don't have a healer already, well, why not just grab it because the enemy team might be going for it. And there we Dying do see the Darks here get picked up. And Dazzle is definitely not a hero that can deal with Darks here. So, so well, I mean, he does in a way. You can keep on healing your carry, but you're not going to be able to zone a Darks here. Uh, with the Tesla. So we're looking for a second good support from Vichy Gaming. Mm, Skyraf, I actually think Skyraf might actually be the support to deal with the Darks here. A hero we haven't seen at all is Shadow Demon. Yeah. Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon like one of the best support combo you can actually get run. It's strong with Clockwork as well. If you want to make the rotation that you mentioned coming to Clockwork's lane, that's Five something back remain. old LGD Int used to start doing. Uh, was ganking the offlane uh, for Clockwork, even setting Reserve up a level time. 1 first. Isn't there. picking up their carry more important? Like, PL, for example, if they want it now, it's probably going to be banned out in the next phase, whereas the supports are more interchangeable. Disruptor, I agree. You know, Bane, we can even see as a Darkseer counter. Sure. Yeah, but there's definitely might. many options that they have. And Disruptor, I think they picked that the last series as yeah, well. Yeah, picked it twice. So Sick. they've been favoring more teamfight oriented, like bigger AoE spells mm. on the supports. It was smart by Zhao Eight and his crew to ban out the Antimage as well, because Gyrocopter doesn't do too well against AM in the remaining. mid game, and Darkseer is a good target, Rubik as well. So VT Gaming would love to play that. And now they're going to grab up Sanking instead, so more fighting. Some combo for the uh, Queen, also follow up on the Clockwork. This actually might suggest that Corp might go on a safe lane, since if Corp is on a safe lane, Sand King will be free to do whatever he wants in the jungle, since you don't need help. So that might actually be a possible move by Vichy Gaming right now. FY Sand King, FY Sand like all over again. He destroyed so many games last year, even this year actually earlier. Ten seconds but uh, they've been ignoring the Sand King completely. Uh, for quite some time, they were like, Vichy Gaming Five was used, remaining. like, they were known for the Sand King Skyros combo on supports. Mm -hmm. Like, Skyros just zones the offlaner, Sand King can time. greet a bit, and he has Dagger, they can just kill whoever they want on the map. Glimmer Cape. Glimmer Cape. <laughs> it's pretty hard, though, to Glimmer Cape. You have to, that has to be a team fight scenario. Like, his pickoff potential with the, with the Sand King is pretty high. We'll see. Either way, I think the uh, Darkseer, if he gets a good start, which he almost always does, an early mech can also counteract the epicenter quite hard. Well, we'll see how... Uh, so how here we've goes. seen a lot for, with Darkseer is TA, because I'm, I'm thinking of mid laners. SF we and, saw a lot of SNL, TA. SF and Ember as well, like LGD just likes Indeed. to pick dual core. One of those three, I guess. I don't think this is the TA game though, but I believe in maybe. He's definitely strong, he could play it, but uh, I don't think this is a game. Dire team ban. I'm dying. They want to contest. They want to contest the lane. Darkseer are dying, perhaps. Could they be. I think the reason why, this is the biggest reason why, is because they saw the Sand King. So I, I was thinking the Sand King would be greedy, right? Because he, he's going Ten to be able remaining. to jungle with the Corp on the safe lane. And so LGD sees that. They want to give pressure, Five so they do Darkseer undying, so they make the Sand King, you're going to go jungle, fine, it's but we're going to pressure your lane. And it's also that, like, Gyro Rubik is such remaining. a strong safe lane that you can actually get away with that. But um, I think that Vichy Gaming Radiant can still run the Corp mid and run a stronger hero on the safe lane. Oh, what's stronger the, the yeah, what is their left stronger lane? There's still only Razor. For what? For the safe lane, if mm -hmm. uh, Sebastian is suggesting that... I feel like Sand King Dazzle plus another melee could actually be stronger because of the heal bomb. I, Undying melts level 1, I think they can actually like, kill Undying level 1. Maybe. Five it's risky remaining. though. Undying, Undying Darkseer combo is super strong against tri -lane. Yeah. Like, they're absolutely... I think you can fight against it. Dire yeah. team pick. Hmm. 
Curious. The PL ban, not too surprising, especially with the Dassel in the team. They could just have made illusions and heal bombs. Would have been scary for uh, Darkseid for sure. Yeah, I feel like Vici didn't really want the PL though. They could have easily taken it if they, team earlier if they really wanted it. Because it was almost certain to be banned out. Well, there you go. Is Super gonna play the Razor? At TI4, he was respected as the best Razor player. I suppose he would play it here. And they just give. Uh, it depends what type of lanes they want, though, because LGD hasn't showed their mid laner. So Vichy came in, can definitely inter interchange the Corp and the Razor the be between the lanes, Ten the mid and top remaining. lane. I really feel like Razor would be better on the safe lane, though. I think with that, with that lane, with Razor sending Dazzle, they can actually beat Doxy on dying. Yeah, and I think so. <laughs> that was a pretty obvious Ember pick. As pick. When you have Dark Sphere combination, they needed more right click. Oh, nice lineup. All right, thank you very much. Let's head down to the arena where our match is about to get underway. We are about to find out who becomes the top three at the International 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're live here on the floor of Key Arena. We're getting ready for Vici Gaming versus LGD Blitz. This is going to be a battle to the death. Loser goes home and will not make it to the final day of the event. Yeah, this is actually... Not too surprising because Vici and LGD, those are both teams that I would have pegged as top four material. Vici looked a little bit shaky throughout the year, but the fact that they've made Final Four, I mean, this is Ice Ice's second remaining. consecutive Final Four. Actually, this is everybody's Five they, on Vici remaining. Gaming's, yeah. They, they've been here, they have gone deep at the event before. Uh, only one player will have a chance to eat as TI champions, and even should they win this match, EG will stand in their way. It's either Hao or Xiao Wei who will be the one last hope for a first ever international repeat, but there's a long way to go before that, and we jump into the game now. Game one has officially begun, LGD on Radiant, Vici on the dire side here, and let's talk a little bit about the draft blitz. For Vici Gaming, they go for the last pick, Razor, and then LGD go into the Ember Spirit. You had been talking about the possibility of a Storm pick. Well, no surprises there, I guess. But it did feel like a good Storm game for, for LGD. Not a whole lot of control aside from the Sand King stun, but they don't opt to go that way in the end. Yeah, and at the same time, they also banned out the Anti-Mage. And so I thought they were setting up for a maybe Storm Spirit, but I mean, he's just as good of an Ember. I actually think this is the best two-way player when it comes to the Spirits. Like Ember Spirit, Storm Spirit maybe is the person that I look to as one of the best for both. Um, they just needed some sort of mobility mid-hero, but I think they favor the Ember Spirit against the Queen of Pain, just so you can lock her down. Before she gets something like a BKB or a Yule Scepter even, you can pretty easily kill her with that Sleight of Fist Chains combo. And they have the Rubik here for MMY, who, who has gone for boots first, so there is some early roaming potential for this team. And the other big thing that I don't think the analyst really had a chance to talk about, because the draft ended almost immediately after that pick, was that Flame Guard and Iron Shell together is a devastating combo early game. You, you just have so much damage that almost nobody can stand against you. That was actually the point that I was going to bring up. No. It's really, really strong. What else you got for me? Uh, Analysis-wise, I mean, LGD, <laughs> early game, they're going to want to take fights before the Sand King gets a Blink Dagger, but as soon as FY does have that Blink Dagger, it's going to be a really weird, tricky timing where from the get-go, you can get aggressive, but around the 10 to 15 minute mark, once FY has that Blink Dagger, you just have to play carefully. The problem is that LG, LGD have that undying, so they want to get aggressive at some points in the game. They do start Xiao Wei off here in the middle lane as the first creep waves will connect. One bounty room for each team. Super's Razor grabbing one, maybe on the Ember, getting the other, and we'll ferry out some additional tangos. Not going to be the easiest lane for maybe left alone, and this is why Xiao Wei helps them early. But I do want to mention, oftentimes when we see one of those potential jungling supports, like an Enigma Chen, there's a little action on top. Yao taking some damage here. He's not level 2, just said FY wants to go, to go for spy. this. He's committing for it. In goes the Bro Strike, and out goes the auto attacks. Yao still juking, still juking. They may die on the way out here. They're trapped by the creeps. Uh oh, FY. Uh, he's going to take some harass. Decay and one swipe from the zombie man. That's oh, one down. Gonna... The Dazzle's going to die here as well. Xiao Wei looking for the early Double. Only how will make it out. Was it worth it? They get the first blood, but they give up two blitz. I don't think so, because all of a sudden Xiao Wei is level two. How has to go all the way around the circle, and he's actually got zero CS the first minute in. Definitely wasn't worth it, especially with the amount of experience that you just gave up. Those are two supports that absolutely rely on getting levels, and that's just time that you don't use to stack or do anything else but go for that gank. And speaking of which, the, the Dire Jungle was not contested, and often you'll see teams, when they're up against one of those heroes, they can clear the stacks quickly. 
a level one smoke gank just off the bat into the woods before the creep spawn, or at least making some sort of an expedition, but the Vici Gaming Jungle is completely open for them to start stacking, and it looks like that'll be the move here for FY. He's gonna head in towards the medium camp near the top rune. Probably will try to secure that for super afterwards. Uh, let's look at our bottom lane here for the Radiant, where it's the Silar Gyrocopter up against an offlane clock. Ice 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 getting his level so far, but this is a, a lane where there's a lot of kill potential for the Gyro if the clock gets caught out. Yeah, and this is the strength of having Silar play the Gyrocopter. You don't really need a support to hard camp him because he can pretty much zone the clockwork out by himself, but at the same time, Ice 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 is going to be pretty comfortable with the amount of levels that he's getting. It's hard for MMY to be able to contest him early game, but at some point he does have to worry about that lift into Rocket Barrage combo. We'll see if MMY makes his move. No smokes picked up on the Rubik as they have settled into dual lanes here. Xiaowei also looking to lane, and well, he's got his boots and magic stick. Yao, no stick just yet, but has the stout. Making it hard for Vici to, to harass these heroes out, and nobody's an easy kill. In fact, as Fenrir goes in with the poison touch, he went for it early, looking for that first blood, even took it before the shadow wave. Uh, they will turn this against Hao, charging forward the Iron Shell, eliminating the creep wave, and Hao taking a beating. He's, he might have to blink away to avoid too much additional harass. I'll hold on to it for now, but... Yeah, even with the boots, this Undying just keeps on running at him. And their cores are farming blitz, maybe 12 and 5 in the mid lane. He only got a little bit of help from the Undying on that first wave or two. Razor not really shutting him down whatsoever. In fact, maybe now ahead of the Razor by 6 CS. And they're also farming the Gyro. They're getting their levels on Yao. I mean, frankly, it feels like they're winning all for three lanes at this point. Yeah, they're doing a really smart job with how they lane. Maybe decided to go for the boots even over the bottle, just so he could actually sustain against the Razor, and I think that was a really intelligent choice, because most people would just get the bottle blindly. Uh, part of the reason why the lanes work out, though, is because is FY is playing this jungling Sand King, who is just not going to be able to provide a lot of help in that top lane, and he just has to get his levels and focus on farming the jungle stacks. And this is going to weaken their Dyer's lanes greatly. Oh, speaking of weak lanes, how is learning that his is not as strong as LGD's so far without the support of the Sand King. He gets hit once more, and instantly forced off and is it does still have the one salve the magic stick up but they continue to get their experience here and now the treads coming out for the gyrocopter of silar not going for the phase boots here a little tankier with this build up that's why we'll find an invis now and he'll be forced to grab it couldn't save it for his mid lane he may turn on shall this is dangerous though that's a level two tube so they'll need to focus it down quickly he's got the stick charges as well he's gonna pop them goes in with the decay looks like they'll get the kill and then turn on the tomb vici gaming no backup here to protect that tomb, so it ends up being a hero kill and a little bit more. Nice turn of events for them. They'll get the extra 100 gold for the tomb there as well. And FY just going to go straight back to the jungle and continue to farm it out, but it's going to be a little slow because he doesn't have that level 3 yet. That's what he really needs to speed this process up, and I think that's the only stack in the jungle available for him, and so it's not like he's going to be able to go and do a lot more. Xiao is doing this other stack by himself using the Ion Shell on the creep. Yeah, that's the other, the other benefit to this lane here, is they get to keep the pressure up on some of the jungle camps. Yao, level 4 now, and no real pressure on him from the supports. Uh, a lot of the game plan is going to hinge on the FY sand chain, and I mean, if there's anyone you want in this position, it's got to be FY in the support role, after what we've seen from his Rubik earlier this tournament. And as, as Mad mentioned, uh, I believe, during the analyst panel, FY Sand King was absolutely magnificent. There used to be a period where they would give away, like, Enigma when he was a very popular jungler, just so they could counterpick with the Sand King. And it got to the point where teams would ban out the Sand King if they wanted their own. But they make the move on mid now. On to supers, caught out, finished off. Easy takedown, maybe dropping the triple remnant there to secure the kill. And they may try to chip at this tower a little bit. Not a whole lot to keep this Ember in place. They need that Blink Dagger Blitz, but it's, it's still a ways off. And this is why you see Dazzles typically not go for the Poison Touch, just because what it gives you in the lane versus what getting something like Grave would give you when you TP in, you don't really deter anybody when you've got level 1 Poison Touch. And they know, and they know he's got it as well, so yeah, exactly. it frees them up. He would have used the heal at top if he had that opportunity, and uh, at the same time, LGD doing a good job of punishing this Razor pick. We saw it yesterday, actually. The limitations of Razor as a hero mid is that you can't really go around ganking. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world. You're incredibly reliant on haste runes, which maybe just picks up. <laughs> maybe S4 maybe should be playing more Razor in the future then. Yeah, and you can't jungle. That's probably the biggest thing, is that it's just incredibly inefficient to jungle if you're behind. You're a static laning hero, meaning that your laning phase has to go exceedingly well. You can't just have a neutral laning phase, but maybe he's even winning in the CS regard, so this Razor pick just isn't paying off. Now, speaking of haste runes, maybe he's the one that spotted one up. He's, his remnants are recharging now. There is a radiant or a dire hill ward that spots this rotation from Yao. This will make his way in mid, and it seems they want to move maybe off the lane. 
Something Vici probably can read, though, just because they did see the Darkseer show his head has maybe backed off, and now they smoke. They're moving. Where does LGD want to strike first? MMY in front. Should be able to breach high ground here. It seems like they want to slow down the v the Sand Cane jungle game of FY. As Super and Fenrir look to break this, they're going to engage now. Level 2, Burrow Strike available, and they will drop the ward. Super getting caught out. There's the two arrow chains, maybe popping the haste and using it to run away. Now the hook from Ice Ice He only connects on his own teammate. Not the best counter initiation as of yet, but they finish off the tombstone. MMI force back. Super chasing in, and Yao surges himself away. Shao it gets low. Again, the chain, but everybody tanky and healthy until the Vibercopter comes in from behind. Silar finding the opening, two down, Dyer's and Beachy in a headlong attack. retreat, maybe. He wants a bit more here. They actually hit the Surge, and a remnant or two available, but he's not going to commit for this. Oh, Dow so blinks low. in, and he will find the Rubik. Still going north is maybe he wants something else here. He's looking for Super. He turns back onto FY, who does manage to dodge the chains, courtesy of the Sandstorm, but still FY finished off in the NLGD, cleaning up this VG Gaming jungle. It's three down. It may even be four. How's out of mana now? He's got two stick charges, no TP scroll. Buys his gloves of haste in a bit of a panic. The sand can't even fall in there in the end, and just a disastrous jungle hold for Vici Gaming. That's the strength of Silar as a player. He's one of those carries that is always willing to carry a TP around. And you saw him just TP into the mid lane, immediately walk over because he anticipates the team fight, and that turns it around completely. That's the power of the Rocket Barrage, plus an Ember Spirit who's had a really good start in the mid lane. On top of that, you saw that combination that we talked about early on in the game. The Ion Shell plus Flame Guard combination. Almost nobody wanted to be near that Ember Spirit. And he had the Haste Rune, which just makes it even more difficult for them. Uh, didn't find the best hook there in Ice 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 either. Maybe something that could have changed the fight if he's able to lock down one of the backliners. But Vici Gaming, still the Blink Dagger in the works here for FY. They did get a Radiant ward down, but it was immediately dewarded by Vici after the fight. So there's no vision, there's no tracking of FY here. But that does not deter LGD, who go right back to the well as they move through the river, Radiant heading north. FY in a pretty good position attack. to reveal this one, and he's getting a bit suspicious. He backs off up a cliff. And now Fenrir, the man who may get caught out. How far do they want to go? Oh, war drop, but it's just in the nick of time for MMY to find Fenrir and look to make him meet his maker. He's on the back foot, and yep, creeps are there. Not going to help him. Gets off a nice heal bomb, but it only delays the inevitable, as he will fall in the end. So the split push will come from Super. He works on the mid lane, bottom ice, 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 working towards the Urn of Shadows. But LGD looks like they may want to continue pushing this top lane out. Shao wait. gets his arcane boots. That can fuel the push. He's almost got the level four tomb here. And they will keep the pressure up. Call down at the ready. How hiding in the trees? Dyer's Has the Sonic Wave available? No epicenter just yet. They can maybe set up for a kill here onto Silar with the full combo, but you have to worry about the counterplay from Xiao Eight. And Vici will end up just backing off and playing defense. At the same time, Hao's just kind of sitting here. He's not able to get any levels in LGD. This is a really aggressive lineup that we've seen from them. And they're going to go on top of Silar. He might instantly get blown up, and he does. Beautiful combination there. Taking down a Dyer's very farmed gyrocopter, leader in terms of CS, not quite in terms of net worth. But that man, the title still goes to maybe for that. He pushes in the mid lane, clears out the wave. He's been applying a lot of pressure here, and again, he feels very safe to move around the map until the FY blink comes out, speaking of which, is very, very close. And we may not see LGD able to stop this any longer. They've used quite a few of their smokes, and at this point, only down to one in the, stat, uh, in the inventory of the shop. And Seems they want to hold on to it for now. So FY will get his blink. He hits level 6. Still only a level 2 burrow, though. Let's see what he can do once he picks it up. And this is a really absurdly farmed maybe right now. He's got 3 kills, 50 CS. For an Ember Spirit who's meant to lose his lane in the middle lane... His first a Razor! Yeah, exactly. He should be about... 1500, maybe even 2k behind in net worth, but... And he's, all, he's almost 1000 ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's really difficult right now for Super to do anything, because he just has to kind of come back to this mid lane, hope for the best. If they decide to gank him, there's not a whole lot he can do in response. And it's hard. And they're oh, gonna smoke. They are gonna smoke again here. Oh, if they go for mid again, I mean, this would just ruin this Super's game. Seven minutes cooldown on the smoke. LGD just all in as far as their smokes go on dominating this landing stage. They will move into the jungle. FY has already secured the blink, and he's actually heading towards bottom. He doesn't have a TP, though. Oh, he's not available here to help out Hal. A tough target to wrangle. They will drop an Observer Ward for now, and it is out of range here of the Dire Sentry. They're still stalking towards this Vici Gaming base. They're about to find two heroes, but it's a long dive. Very dangerous to commit around the Tier 3 towers. LGD. 
And third smoke won't connect. Now the hook though. Ice Ice Ice, he's found one. It's MMY. Looks for the two hero cog pushback, but instead the tomb gets dropped. He finds nobody. Maybe looking to turn this. They chain and isolate Ice Ice Ice, who drops the cogs and is just going to hang on for dear life. Remnant out available. Maybe going in with auto techs. Yao finally will fall here. The grave on Ice Ice Ice, keeping him alive. They're forced to jump maybe back, but charging in is Silar, who pounds his way right through the dazzle that was on mid. Now the call down. Blake Burrow from FY. Where's that Epi? He doesn't have the clarity, but no mana super. Just taking it in the mouth he can't hang on fy can he turn this it's how who does makes it three it's four the lone survivor silar limping away on 50 hp my oh my it turns out they didn't even need an epicenter that fight and that's the scary thing right now for lgd because that was a fight that looked really advantageous for them they immediately catch ice 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 it took them so long to do damage to him. He actually had 1100 HP and they couldn't burst through that even though it was 4v1. FY didn't even get an opportunity and the rocket got him. It's a five man wipe. Vici Gaming standing strong and turning this one early on its head. Let's see what more they can do. Ice 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 getting aggressive here and he sees they have two heroes great at clearing the Ancient, so he's going to drop a ward there. Blocks the, the stacking potential, and he is mo rotating towards top. He gets a lane ward down on Yao. Is he going to go for the solo kill? You can see it. He wants to. But he needs a little more backup, which is coming in now. It's Hao with a DD rune directly above this hook shot. They've isolated Yao. There's no backup in sight. One auto tech, maybe two should do it. And Yao, the next man to fall. Six kills in a row here for Vici as they continue to plow ahead. MMY just a bit late on the counter rotation, and Hal will blink into the trees. He's not TPing out yet. He has the ward. He's hoping to see the squishy Rubik poke his head out, and he's found MMY, but has to be worried about the lift under tower and the counterplay. MMY, a creep from six, and now he's got it. Could go for the spell steal. This is making Hal a bit more nervous. Was hoping for that rocket to connect, but Hal, in the end, seems he, he won't find the easy takedown. LGD are gonna back off towards mid. And that DD rune at the same time, it expires, and Hal is just continuing to wait for here, and <laughs> now he blinks out, and this is going to tell LGD, okay, we made the right play, the ward was definitely there, but the sentry's just outside of vision, and that's an easy call for them to make that the ward is there, especially if Hal's just waiting in there blind <laughs> for over 35 seconds. You see the rocket coming like that as well, and, and, and you just get really suspicious. Why is there a rocket there? Nobody was low. They probably have some idea of a, a potential kill in, the, in this lane. Oh, Ice 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 now picking up his Staff of Wizardry and, well, still a close game here early. It's been pretty back and forth in terms of the, the momentum swings, but they've overall been relatively small ones. What do you see as the next step here for Vici Gaming Blitz? They have the Blink Dagger and FY. He's picked up two smokes and he has the level four burrow. Good aggressive wards are up. What's your move as Vici? Just start smoke inking like crazy. You can go for kills on maybe if you have Hal there, who's almost completed the Orchid. Going for the Roshan probably isn't feasible, but you've got four smokes available to you. And... Yes, LGD were winning the early game, but that was on the back of the fact that they used four smokes really early. Half of them didn't pan out for them. Two of them led to, what, a three kill? But aside from that, Vici Gaming, they've got so much more room to work with when it comes to map control. They can pretty much go wherever they want at this phase of the game. You have no idea how much smoke matters when you can't really get a gem this early on in the game and you can't justify one either. And so LGD is really going to struggle at this phase of the game. They pretty much just have to wait behind each other in anticipation for things like this. Well, ideally during that time you'd love to be stacking, and there's an illusion here that attempted to do it just a moment ago for maybe at the Ancients, but that ward also hasn't been dewarded, and it's going to slow down the economy. Silence, thorough. Yeah. <laughs> They're not making it easy here. I will work on the creep wave. Maybe he'll eat a heal bomb for his insolence. That's ice, ice, ice. Moves towards the bottom lane. Nobody even showing on this side of the map. They're literally just five manning around the tier one tower and their own jungle, terrified of the moves Vici can make. And this is with every tower up blitz. It's not, it's not like they've actually lost the, the points of control. Attack. They just don't have the confidence to get out and get active. It's just Radiant when you know a team hasn't fortified. attempted a smoke ink the entire game and you're in waiting for it. You're just in anticipation. And <laughs> I think they've also probably seen FY's inventory at some point. Yeah, and what also helps is that FY isn't showing himself on the map, and he's not walking Radiant's through wards. Those are two really attack. key points, because that means LGD Radiant's have no idea where he is half the time. He doesn't just show himself on the map at all times. He'll just poke his head, wait for farm, and notice he does that at top too. He makes it a point not to show himself no matter what. He doesn't even bother farming jungle stacks. 
He, he knows he'll, get, he'll catch up if he has the one big fight. You get the epicenter burst strike, you get involved in a killer two. Any, any amount that you fall behind experience-wise will, will come right back your way from the, the kills themselves. It's just blood that FY wants right now. LGD bringing the full five-man squad in on mid. Hope shot's ready, and Ice 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 moves into position from the south. Coming back from behind the tower is Fenrir. They surge, maybe, but he doesn't really want to go in. And the tower will end up falling. They even popped the mech. It is a tower down for LGD, but while that was all going on, Super took a freebie bottom, and they're also going to take top as well. Glyph is used. Silar burrowed. FY takes the tower. He blinks out. Nice little individual play there. Getting two towers for Vici Gaming for the one of LGD. And and you can really start to see it, not so much in the gold graph, but especially in the experience where, despite no kills for some time, they're now up to a 3,000, almost 3,500 experience lead. And what helps Vici a lot is that Howe's about to finish that Orchid, and that gives him solo kill potential. And in these team fights, it's going to allow him to just force the Ember Spirit to never walk in. Like, maybe he has to play this so cautiously at this phase of the game, this might actually even force him to go for a Manta style or something defensive, and if just you, so he can survive. And if you do that, unlike, say, an Anti-Mage, like, that's a, that's a big win, because Manta is not normally the best Ember item, so it'll delay his farm progression, it'll de delay the potential late game that LGD looked for, where they've got two big AoE damage dealers in the Gyro and the Ember. So oh, no Silas uh -oh. alone by himself. He's probably pretty far here. BKB not quite ready yet, and they're gonna go. Fy with the burrow to start. How follow up with the scream, looking for the Sonic Wave, not using it yet. They use the Epi instead. Fy strikes and gets closer to level 10. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, maybe was chasing out Fenrir, but he'll just TP away after the chains get used. So LGD unable to find the counter thrust. It's another kill for Vici, and it's on a big core here. Despite not having the best control for an Ember as far as heroes go, they now are going to get it. The Orchid of Hal is officially online. He's still got the Sonic Wave. He salves up. He wants to make this work for him and his team as soon as possible, already just rushing down this top lane. And LGD, they don't... How long until their next smoke, actually? Okay, they have one smoke. This has to count, LD. They actually have to get so much out of this. I, I almost feel like they don't want to use it right now. I feel like they just want to sit back and, and farm and just try to wait out Vici, get the BKB on the gyro of Silar up and, and get maybe his first item. You mentioned Manta. Do you, do you think he has to go Manta? Can he risk a Battle Fury, or is that just too greedy here? You go for the Battle Fury and you get Orchid it up, all your net worth goes away. Then the Battle Fury is almost completely pointless. Mm -hmm. You could maybe just sit behind the power of the Gyrocopter and the Undying, but... And kind of bait your team a little bit. Yeah, but even that isn't the best play that you could possibly make. Maybe LGD do wait to use the smoke, but I think it's better for them to use it and maybe contest that bottom tier 1 tower, or wrap around and try to look for a kill. You have to open up the map though and find some space because they have no idea where the wards are from Vici Gaming. They can't really play aggressively because they know that Vici Gaming has smokes of their own. And so this makes it really difficult for LGD to play anything other than 5 man. Once they completed the mech on Yao, they decided to take that mid tower because they felt, okay, we have to eventually leave our base, but you're probably waiting for your next major tier item, which is going to be Silar's EKB. And then after that, you have to start getting aggressive. Well, maybe still saving his gold. It seems like he, he wants to see if they can win a fight before, before he decides here. Up to 3,700 already. Really does want that battle fury, it feels. But not spending the gold yet, and Silar will close in on his BKB. Scouting in front. Uh-oh. Double sentry, and they found him. Maybe caught out the silences there. Well, he's going to pay for that. Vici were ready. They just knew something was up, and they will punish him. Well, now he's going to still go for the battle fury. <laughs> Looks like he buys three of the components. He's not, he's not even deterred by a Blitz, but it may cost him later on. I feel like that should, once he sees the Orchid too, and that Blink Dagger Sand King, he should tell himself, okay, there's almost no chance It's that. It's funny, like normally the response is like, oh shit, I, I'm gonna need a Manta here, but his response is, I'm get, definitely getting a Battle Fury now. Another hook from Ice Ice Ice, this on the out in the Radiant Jungle. Completely put out, he'll pop the mech, he hangs on, but he can't get away. No force to save him. They are engaging with the, uh oh, watch out for FY. He gets lifted, he's got the epicenter, they drop the tombstone in time, and they will bring him down. Tomb gets killed off, but no epi for this fight. Didn't even get a chance to channel it. Super with his own BKB moving in. Xiaowei very slow here. Can't get away. It's up to Silar. Doesn't have the BKB. Remnants have arrived. Maybe tried to turn this, but he's fighting into three. Can he finish off How even? The grave. He can't do it. It's four. Maybe remnanting away and just running for dear life. The creep's almost catching him out. But he will escape in the end. And again, another one fight for Vici without the Epi Blitz. They just don't need it. It's just a superior vision in these fights. Vici Gaming have a lot more to work with when it comes to farm. 
That Queen of Pain scares maybe so much. He can't actually just walk into the fight blindly and start casting abilities. He has to play the spacing game, but when your team gets caught out like that and you don't have a BKB completed yet on your gyrocopter, you've got no frontline tank that prevents them from just going on you. And we saw that right there as maybe... The other issue is that that Grave is just doing absolute work. He can't just stand there and say, okay, maybe he, he'll miss the spell. Like, he has to hard commit for it, but every it, it, single time he does, he'll die. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the accidental self-cast is not something you really want to build your game plan around here for LGD. And the frontline tank on paper, it could be an undying. Xiao had a good start, but he's just playing too much of that support role. He's not really getting all that much farm, and they're not really getting much use out of the tombstone. The Razor's able to focus it down, and even the Queen of Pain does pretty good physical damage now. But 140 a pop. It, it feels like without the tombstone and without the BKB on Gyro, the team fight just isn't really there for LGD. Yeah, they're actually going to have to wait for the Battle Fury to complete and then for Silar to get that BKB. And like you said, they saved up that smoke. They don't have one for another eight minutes. Whatever smoke timing comes, they actually have to win the fight at that point, or it's just going to be a waiting game for them where Vici Gaming can just farm out the entire map because they have superior vision. Attack. They can get a gem if they want at some point uh, on either of their cores and give it to the supports just to deward. And at the same time, they've got more smokes to work with, and so they can just get all the map control in the world that they want, and you're seeing that here. We are seeing it for most of the heroes, but maybe is getting out on the map. He's not deterred by this Queen of Pain Orchid, and they do have some Radiant Wards now in their own jungle, and this lets them know that he's safe to go aggressive on the top lane, Radiant's Battle Fury complete in the stash. He is fighting his farm here, Blitz. The rest of the team falling behind, but we've seen this from maybe. I mean, you go back to the opening group stage game, where LGD took on Cloud9, Dyer's and it was an absolute thriller, and maybe just made all the individual plays in the world. It seems like that's where LGD are headed. Just bank on the Ember Spirit, getting out of control, play defensive, turtle around him, let your focal point for now be Silar's BKB, and let maybe be the person who pushes you over the top later on. But. I think they should smoke for this and try to go for the wraparound. They've got the BKB completed on Silar. They don't have the best team at holding this high ground area. But there comes the weave. They feel confident. Ice 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 does have a hook. Can he bait out the Silar BKB and just try and force a fight from there? Also has his own four staff ready, so he can quickly disengage on the side of LGD. No four staff yet. Yao is going towards one, but hasn't completed it. He's actually only about 75 gold here away. And well, another four staff. This one for Vici. Item we haven't seen a whole lot of coming more into play here. Top lane slowly getting pushed down for the Radiant, so too is the mid, and LGD holding Radiant's very far back. Courier even coming over the tree line a bit. Uh, not sure what he's up Radiant to. Just maybe fortified. doing a bit of scouting, but he's in a dangerous position to get picked off. And LGD just turtling. They're holding the tower. The tier 2 not claimed. It's going to be a second weave from Fenrir as the slow chip continues. Another rocket from Ice Ice Ice. Still just looking for the right opening. They don't want to hard commit. They want to find that quick, clean pickoff. Maybe he's actually the man in front, trying to bait this a bit. They want them to go on him. They have the four staff to counterplay. Well, maybe he's in vision. They, now he's in vision. Now. He's going to engage. There's the chains. He jumps out instantly, hoping to force out something from Vici. But the tower is being chipped down here. And Super continues to stand in front. Creeps doing the work that the LGD heroes can't on the other lanes. They catch up Super again, trying to really force this BKB. No one's cooperating. Now the decay. Out goes the Tombstone. Beach just want to back away this one. But Ice 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 goes in, looking for the cogs. He doesn't pop them in time. He's surrounded by many. They get off a beautiful static lane. Call down there. Pop one over the top. Get next up to Silar Jawe holding their ground for now as MMY has stolen the hook. He goes back in, but it's too late. His FY's already gotten off. The Epi hasn't finished off anyone yet, though. Only these backlight heroes maybe stands. And he looks to turn this. Has the chains available, but not the vision. He needs every bit on Vici getting low aside from the Queen of Pain, who is the healthy one that goes in first. Maybe Silence, can they catch him out? This will be a huge takedown. He's kept alive, glimmered back, healed up, survives, and now jumps double remnant away. But it's Hal getting the kills, and maybe and Sila are the ones on the run. Hal wants to go for it. He got him again. The pick this might cost him. He's up high, chains are there. No, the Orchid give this man a rampage. It's a rampage for Hal. They are out fighting the crap out of LGD, and they're not going to back down here. They want to clear out this wave. A very prolonged fight. Normally, that's where heroes like Ember, Undying, Excel, but Vici Gaming just outlasted them. It's just the amount of farm right now. The initiation from Ice Ice Ice, which allowed the Razor to steal so much damage. Vici Gaming, they were patient throughout that entire fight. Sand King comes in with the epicenter at the last second. He was clutch. FY hit multiple hero bro strikes repeatedly. 
Fenrir was always there with the shallow grave and the heal, and I mean, LGD, that was a really admirable effort. It looked for half a second like they were going to hold that fight with that mech turnaround, but it's just the amount of farm that they have. And this has to be so scary for LGD because they hit their item timing right there. They got the BKB on Silar. He's not going to get any items off to the back of that fight. He doesn't have enough gold. That was the fight that LGD had to win to come back into this game. Their heroes aren't going to get stronger from here on out. The Ember Spirit, 146 gold. Xiaoyate has a Glimmer Cape. Like, nobody's getting any more items. And uh, there is a Dazzle on the other team, which means no matter how far this Ember gets, if he gets the Weave off, and I think he used it twice, maybe even a third time towards the end, there's a lot he can get accomplished. Ice 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 hooking in, he's able to force out a BKB charge, essentially just trading a cooldown that they were unlikely to use anyway. This keeps Silar back in the lane, and still the aggressive wards. You just gotta look at the map control for Vici. You've brought it up a few times, Blitz, and it, it continues to be worth repeating that this is the team who who has the vision right now. Even though there's some decent wards for LGD, they don't really accomplish anything offensively because they, they can't get out on the map. They're just not strong in fights. So Vici will take the opportunity. And they walk into the Roche pit. It'll be a relatively slow going here. It's almost like they have wards up just to have wards up. Yeah. If you want some vision on the map, you don't really care where it comes from. You it's just want some vision to kind of make yourself feel a little bit more safe. But I think LGD, oh. they know about the they're, Roche. They're they going to fight it. This, fight. this, this is, is that big smoke. smoke. It's the big smoke that you mentioned, but Ice 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 is in position. He can completely interrupt oh, this. Chains this. starts it out. He gets the cogs down. Roche is in danger of dropping. Who's going to get it? Will they go in? Do they engage? Where's the leap? Oh, he's too late. He went for the remnant, but doesn't find it. And, they end. and now the Aegis on the Queen of Pain, who jumps in, finds the Quabble, driving Silar back. Ice 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 hurrying him away. And meanwhile, FY also pursuing down MY. They've gotten two. They're looking for the third. MMY to Burrow. They get him as well. Oh. Oh, he had a big steal there too, Blitz, but never got a chance to grab the epicenter counterplay and, and use it. They drop three, they do keep alive the Darkseer and the Ember, but to what avail? Nothing really ventured there by Vici. Just a couple of low cooldown ultimates, and they're going to go high ground with this. It's going to be so hard for them to stop this too, because maybe he doesn't have quite enough farm, and as long as Vici Gaming stays spread out, Fenrir can heal out most of it, and Ice 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 with the semi jump in, but he doesn't want to hard commit for this. Uh -oh. just hit the They've power. got vision here from Hal. The TP comes in from Xiao Wei. FY can go at him. The Orchid to start. He wants FY to engage, but he's not cooperating. FY's looking for the two hero burrow. The bigger play. He won't find it. Vici Gaming will back out, but they have done a ton of structural damage here. The glyph was cooling down up in six seconds, but it's too late for that push. Still holding on to the Aegis, and Hal will move into a, a Hyperstone. Feels like it's a pretty good Assault Caress game just to be able to break the base. This just feels like the build that he wants to go for in most games. I think this is actually the third or fourth time I've seen him go for the Orchid and a BKB for the defensive item, and then you get an Assault Curris into something like a crit or an MKB if you need it. He just wants to pack a punch. He wants his hero to be able to transition into the late game and be a physical damage dealer when those BKBs are so prevalent. But, I mean, it doesn't even matter because LGD, two of those BKB charges were already used on Silar, and we remembered the one at top, which was just traded for a cooldown. That's an 8 second BKB now, and in a fight where you might see multiple Hero Sand King stunts over and over again, he needs that full 10 seconds. And they don't have the, the great defensive save of a, a Grave like the Dazzle can bring to bear here for Vici. It, it is punishing them. The Undying normally pretty good through the early to mid game for that type of thing, but we're getting to that point now where the heal just doesn't stand up to the Vici gaming damage output. And it is really a different build for the Queen of Pain. I mean, you look at, I think Fada is a great example of a, a Queen of Pain who got six slotted, had the full, like, caster build. Your Aghanim Scepter, Hex, Refresher, Octarine Core, BKB. But there was one game in the tournament, I remember, where he just, it turned super late, and he just couldn't go blow for blow with some of the traditional right-click carries in the game. So we'll have to see if Hal is forced into that position, and, and if so, if he can withstand the damage LGD brain. For now, they get more active on the map, but they will push out the mid lane here. It seems maybe he's going to begin taking some chances, knowing that if he doesn't get out, Vici will just win by death ball moving towards bottom. They are strong enough to just clump up now. They've got the advantage they're looking for 31 minutes in, and that age is still sitting on Hound. No Assault Caress just yet, but still looking to go. It looks like FY is going to be building towards a Yule Scepter for additional kiting potential and setup here. Point Booster coming out for Super, who will go into the Aghanims most likely. Another good item for breaking the base. And LGD are a great high ground lineup, and they go on Silar to start. Will he BKB? No. Patiently going to back out. 
I'm trying to just bait these cooldowns from LGD and then break the base. But for now, they get the glyph out. That's just as good as a BKB. Chains onto Super. Rocket will be dealt with. And still MMY sitting way back, looking for a big spell still. He could be the difference maker for LGD, but they've already lost the tower. FY, a rare miss on the Burrow Strike, and now they engage on the Super. They drop the Tombstone in a very forward position, perhaps too forward. How's going to deal with it? No Tombstone for this fight, really. Oh, the BKB cons. now, and there's the cons comboed with the Queen of Pain ult. They found another kill. How just goes in with an FP from FY. They're all dead. BG wipe them out again, and LGD tap out. Beautiful team play by Vici Gaming. This they team all knew when they wanted to go in. This team has come alive here at the main event. They looked lost in the group stage. They looked like the, their mojo was gone, but Blitz, they, they had a pep talk. I just don't know how else to put it. Somebody got through their heads that you guys are a great team if you work together, and we just see them continue to rise to the occasion time and again here at the main event. They put LGD into a 0-1 hole in an elimination match. What a run for Vici. It all